There are survival tricks so raw, so feel-born, they hit you with that electric jolt of weight. This actually works? This is one of them. A forgotten wartime hack that didn't come from clean laboratories or polished manuals, but from cold nights, exhausted soldiers, and the stubborn will to create light when darkness had every advantage. And the best part? It still works today just as reliably as it did in the mud and wire of World War II. Why soldiers relied on this strange chemical glow when everything else became dangerous? Once you step into the mindset of scouts, sappers and night watch crews, the brilliance of this hack becomes obvious. Flames were dangerous. Lanterns could reveal a position from far off. Even a match flicker could mean the wrong eyes spotting movement in the dark. When fuel ran out or stealth was non-negotiable, soldiers needed something quiet, controlled, barely visible beyond arm's length. And the battlefield delivered ingredients so common they were practically lying on the ground. Rust, vinegar, nothing glamorous, nothing rare. Just two mundane materials whose chemistry produced a slow, stable, glowing reaction. No flame, no sparks, just a ghost-level illumination. Steady enough to read small notes, check equipment, trace lines on a map, or inspect a mechanism in the dead of night. These troops didn't talk about it much. They just used it because it worked. The power came from simple chemistry soldiers learned by necessity. Here's the heart of it. When vinegar touches rust, iron oxide, it dissolves the oxide layer and exposes fresh iron. That fresh metal reacts again. Hydrogen gas forms. Heat trickles out. And with that gentle heat, certain minerals or carbon-based powders begin to glow. Not bright like fire more like a slow ember that never turns into a flame. Soldiers figured out that chalk dust, plaster, powdered gypsum, or even fine charcoal responded especially well to that gentle heat. Spread across a prepared rust vinegar mixture, these powders would glow for hours. Not enough to light up a tent, but absolutely enough to keep a soldier operational in the dark without tipping off enemy scouts. How they actually built these low-glow units in the field. This part often gets lost, but it's where the improvisation becomes real. A working unit didn't need advanced materials. Just a soldier determined not to be blind at night. They would scrape rust from any available surface and crush it into powder. This mattered. The finer the powder, the cleaner and more controlled the glow. Then they'd mix the rust with a splash of vinegar until it became a thick paste. That paste was spread inside a shallow container, sometimes a metal lid, sometimes a folded scrap sheet, or even thick leather hardened by cold. Over the paste, they pressed a thin layer of mineral dust or charcoal. This top layer acted as the glow surface. To keep the whole thing from drying out or cracking, they sometimes added a rolled cloth or braided twine structure. Not as a wick for burning, but as a stabilizer that kept the chemistry consistent. Within minutes, the reaction started. Within half an hour, the glow became steady enough for use. One to three hours of faint illumination, depending on moisture. If things dried out too quickly, a drop of vinegar fixed it. If the mix loosened too much, more rust thickened it. It was art meeting chemistry under pressure. A perfect example of soldiers refusing to surrender control to the dark. Now, here's where history meets practical modern survival. If you want to experience this lost method firsthand, you absolutely can, safely in controlled outdoor or ventilated space. 
Start by collecting heavily rusted steel and grinding it to powder. Avoid anything painted or chemically treated. Mix that powder with plain white vinegar until you make a paste. Spread a thin layer of powdered chalk, plaster dust or charcoal on top. Place it all inside a shallow metal or ceramic container. Set the container outside or beside open airflow. The reaction releases trace hydrogen gas, not explosive in these tiny quantities, but better handled responsibly. After 20 to 30 minutes, a faint ember-like glow should appear. It won't flare up. It won't produce open flame. That's the beauty of it. You've just recreated a stealth light method soldiers kept alive through necessity. If the glow fades too fast, add a tiny bit of vinegar. If it becomes muddy, add more rust. Once you understand the balance, you'll see why this was such a dependable fallback. Where this applies in real survival scenarios today, modern gear is incredible, but it fails. Batteries die, LEDs crack, cold drains electronics, moisture ruins contacts. Anyone serious about preparedness knows redundancy is king. This rust and vinegar method gives you a zero electricity, zero fuel, infinitely replenishable glow source using materials found almost anywhere. Rust can be harvested from abandoned structures. Vinegar can be carried or substituted with acidic fruit juice. Mineral powders come from plaster debris, chalk or powdered charcoal. With nothing but scrap materials, you get a stealth-safe, no-flame, low-light source for reading, repairing, navigating, or signalling in short range. It's not just history. It's resilience. A reminder that the resourcefulness of World War II soldiers didn't fade. It still works. If you're part of the History HQ family and you love uncovering real usable field science like this, make sure you subscribe, share this with someone who respects survival ingenuity, and stick around for more deep dives into forgotten skills that deserve a second life.